So today's reading is uh, one as Catholics we can kind of like scratch our heads about and you know many uh, anti-Catholics will say you see you Catholics have got it wrong. Jesus says it himself do not call anyone father and you say father to the priest. We don't need priests. We're all baptized in Christ as brothers and sisters and you know what really sounds like and it would really appear like that we are actually anti-biblical if we say father to a priest and um and jesus actually says do not say father to anyone on this earth you only have one father in heaven and so in this uh discussion of um the this homily during this special mass that we commemorate our dearly beloved ones that have gone before us I want to look at two things in particular. Is one this question of addressing priests as father, whether that's legitimate or not? I mean, it sounds like it's not, but why do we do it? And then secondly, that our true fulfillment, our true desires, our heart's joy, is never to be found in the praise of other human beings. Is never to be found in just doing what others want but that we can somehow humble ourselves in a way that we serve only God. So did Jesus absolutely prohibit saying Father to anyone? This is something that Biblists throughout the world, and that we have a local Biblist, uh, Dr. Brown Petrie, that goes through this very clearly, using the scripture, because what we as Catholics do, we don't just take one phrase out of context, context um, but we look at the whole of the scripture and so what is indicated here is that Jesus uses in the scriptures um, different ways of speaking so of course there's the literal there's also analogical so symbolism parables you've got to look at the scriptures in a sense there's also what you call hyperbole 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 means hyper to be exaggerate in what he says to to get the point across for example if your right hand or rather if your left hand causes you to sin cut it off it's better for you to go into heaven with only one arm one hand rather than going to hell with both if your if your right if your left eye causes you to sin pluck it out now it's clear that jesus is not asking us to mutilate the temple of God. Whoever destroys the temple will be destroyed, says uh, St. John, I believe. So what are we trying to get at? Like, if we look at this, the scriptural, different scriptural phrases, you'll see that Jesus is not saying, like, what are children meant to call their parents? They're not meant to say father? You know, logically, it can't be that, it's not that clear cut. So, Let's just quickly go through, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but just look at some of the scriptural references that can help us understand that there's an, that there is meaning in this Catholic symbolism of saying father, like a, a, a spiritual fatherhood and a spiritual motherhood as well that women have. So John 14, 20, Jesus, from Jesus' same words, he says, On that day you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. I'll say that again. On that day you'll realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in, am in you. Whoever sees me, sees the Father. So, in the priest, in a very special way, his unique way, when he's consecrating the Eucharist, when he forgives sins, remember Jesus says, I left you an example so that you may follow that in the imitation of Christ there are a special 12 that followed Christ that were different from the 72 and from the others Jesus led an intimate few up that mountain whom he gave through the laying on of hands as we read in the Acts of the Apostles the blessing to be able to consecrate the Eucharist and to forgive sins sacraments and so we can see in a special way a connection to God through the priest in a very special way. 
Now I'm going to come back to that. So you say, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so convinced about that. One, one could say. So, Matthew nineteen nineteen. This one's pretty straightforward. Honor your mother and your father, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said this to the rich young man who wanted to follow him. Okay, so Jesus is saying, honor your father. So he's not rejecting the father. So already we can sort of see. Okay, we've got to take this phrase from Jesus in a in a different way than just literally. Acts seven two. So in this uh, in this scene, you have uh, Saint Stephen. He's the first martyr, the first uh, person to be killed for the name of Jesus, and he's he stands up in front of all of the the uh, the Pharisees, the the, the Jewish scribes, um, all of the people of the temple, and he says, "Brothers and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham." Now it goes on to say that Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was stoned to death and then um, when he saw heaven. So we can understand if he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he couldn't have been sinning by saying, Father Abraham, or to you, my brothers and fathers. Again, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, this one's maybe one of the most obvious. St. Paul says, Corinthians 4, he says, For though you have countless guides in Christ's, you do not have many fathers, for I became your father in Jesus Christ. Paul, one of the greatest saints upon the earth. Well, now in heaven. Uh, John, first letter of John, uh, uh, chapter 2, verses 13 to 14. I am writing to you fathers because you know him who is uh, from the beginning. And so, again, so... <clears throat> Jesus does not condemn the priesthood, um, let alone saying Father. But in fact, in, in today's reading, he actually affirms and confirms the priesthood. If we read the words of today's gospel, he says, The scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seats on the chair of Moses. So what is the chair of Moses? The chair of Moses is it's like a, a symbol of authority that actually after Moses that uh, the, when decisions had to be made, these high priests would have a certain authority over the people in their decision-making and being able to understand and interpret the law. And so Jesus is not condemning them, but he's actually saying, the scribes and the Pharisees have taken their seat on, on the chair of Moses. Therefore, do and observe all the things whatsoever that they tell you. So <clears throat> what's Jesus getting at? In today's scriptures, what he's saying is not so much that the priesthood is a false creation by man and not so much that we just have to be l l law abiding and, and um, strictly um, serving God just by doing everything that we can not to make a mistake. Of course, we do need to strive to do that, but rather, as he says quite clearly, they do not follow their example. For they preach, but they do not practice. So <clears throat> I can say, yes, I'm guilty of that at times. You know, I think we all are. Um, put aside the ministry of priesthood. All of us can be a little bit guilty of not putting into practice fully what Jesus teaches us. Now, if a priest, and this is where Jesus comes heavy down on us priests, is you have a role of authority... And if you command, you demand from people things that are impossible for them to actually do and just lay out the law without trying to help them actually come into communion in Christ. Those priests, like myself, it could be if I don't convert, if we don't convert, are going to be asked much more of the Lord than other people. What has been given, what a lot has been given, much will be asked in return. And so the gate is very narrow. <laughs> It's difficult. And Jesus is not refusing the priesthood. He's actually saying it's a very special and sacred role to help people who are suffering from the loss of their loved ones, to help people try to find the relationships of true love, to help people try to come into communion with God. It's not enough just to tell them what to do, but you have to walk with them. We have to try to, to lead people by our example above all. And so... In this spiritual fatherhood, a father who just commands of his children to do the right thing but doesn't try to get down to their level, to speak their language, to try to give them a good example, becomes 
a dictator in a certain sense, becomes a tyrant. And Jesus is speaking strongly against that. Their works are performed to be seen. I mean, yeah, it could be uh, a temptation, and it is a temptation. St. Francis of Assisi, when he used to preach, he would have, he'd have a brother behind him whispering into his ear. Like as he's, so Francis is telling people how to follow God. His brother would say, like Francis would order him to say, you're doing this for vain glory. Look at you. You've got a big head. Everyone's looking at you. Now you think you're good. You're actually nothing. You're worth dirt. You know, like he, would, he would say that to just keep him in place, right? <laughs> but the truth is, who's not tempted to seek the praise of man? It's a temptation we all have. I mean, t- these days on Facebook, those little likes, you know, did, are people looking at me on the, on, the, on the internet. You know, it could be just desiring the respect of people, you know, at work, in our families, to be popular, to be intelligent, you know, for some is to be macho, to be strong, to, to, to try to appear as that they're not hurt on the inside, or even those who try to be funny all the time. Our fulfillment is not found in pleasing others. Our fulfillment is found in pleasing God. Whoever, again, temptation for all of us, whoever is imprisoned by the desire of others, like I know so many children, youth, going to college because their parents want them to do it. They've got to do this. You know, like we're so worried about how people look at us, peer pressure. Whoever's unable to break through that, their whole life will be following the will of other men, other women, and never do God's will. They'll never experience full happiness. They'll never find true freedom. And so how are we to find this? Jesus says, who observes these precepts, even the least will be considered the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It's not a bad thing to desire greatness in heaven. But how are we to do that? Jesus continues today, the greatest amongst you must be your servant. The way to break through the fears of what other people think, of trying to please others by public opinion, is by sincerely striving to, to love God with all our hearts, with all our minds, and with all our souls, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, to try to serve others. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. We pray that through our own suffering, through having been humbled through a hurricane, sometimes our own bodies failing, even death itself, that through the being humbled by our humanity, our broken humanity, we might be able to learn that it is God alone that we must trust. But there are some things that Jesus, our God, asks us to do, to humble ourselves. One is confessing our sins with humility, and two is receiving the Eucharist, who eats my body and drinks my blood has eternal life. Amen.